Okay, in this quick tutorial, I'd like to show you some different ways that you can use Keynote to go over with students uh, some sort of activity that was on a handout. So, for example, if you did a quick quiz with your students or a lab activity or, a, you know, some sort of worksheet, um, Keynote's a great tool for reviewing, annotating, going over these worksheets with your students in a presentation setting. Now the first thing, and probably the most important thing, is that you turn your document, whatever the handout was, you turn it into a PDF. Of course, this can be done from Pages or from Microsoft Word. Now, I have a PDF here. I'll open it up and show you. Uh, it's just a simple three-page PDF document making uh, that includes about 20 uh, Earth Science questions. So, for example, this may have been a quiz. I believe this was actually a review for uh, preparation for a quiz. So I handed this out, probably as a homework assignment, and uh, I'd probably begin the next day's class by going over some of these questions. Now, uh, if you are lucky enough to have a document camera in your classroom, you can certainly use that and actually project your document on the board. But I find that Keynote uh, is a great tool for, for going over worksheets, and you can actually make some really nice but really simple presentations to go over answers. Let me show you what I mean. Let me launch a Keynote document here and create a new document. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and create uh, a, a document with the white theme. Okay, let me get rid of this. I'm just going to zoom out a little bit so you can see what I'm looking at here. Okay, now I have a, a blank slide, and what I'd like to do is I'm going to take my um, PDF document, which I have right here opened in preview, and uh, one of the important things is you want to view it in your thumbnail view. So when you open preview, it actually gives you this view, which is just the page you're looking at. We want to actually see the thumbnails. And the reason being, then I can actually drag and drop any of the three pages right into my keynote. So what I will do first is I'm going to take the first page and notice I'm just dragging it and dropping it right into keynote. And there you go. There's your PDF right in there for you to do whatever you want with. Um, I'm also going to go ahead and make a second slide and I will drop in the second page just so we can do some work with some graphics in there as well. Now I'm going to quit um, pages, uh, preview rather. Of course you could bring in the third page as well, but for today we'll just deal with these two pages. Now let's start with number one. What I like to do just to kind of add some pizzazz is give the page, the PDF which I dropped in, give it a, a stroke um, or a picture frame just to make it look kind of like a piece of paper. So when I say to my students, okay, get out this handout, uh, they can kind of visualize what we're talking about. Now, of course, when I want to start going over this, um, it's going to be way too small projected on the screen like this. So what I'll often do is take my slide and I'll hit Command D and duplicate it. And so now I have a perfect copy uh, in my first and second slide. And what I'll do on the second slide is I will resize my PDF by just basically making it larger. Um, and I can make it as large as I want. So say, for example, I'm going to go over that first question. What I can actually do is place it so that that first question is right in the middle of the screen, nice nice and big, just like that. Okay. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go back to that first slide, and I'm going to put a transition on this. Um, and this is really just to make it look cool. I'm going to use the magic move transition. And what you see is you get this neat kind of zooming effect. Let me show you what it looks like. So here's what the students will see. And then when you tap on it, it's going to zoom right in to that first question, which is nice. Now, something that happens a lot is students are going to be distracted by all the other writing here. So what you can do on this second slide is you can actually create a quick white box. In this case, white because the background is white. And the purpose of this is that this will actually, I'm taking off the stroke, um, so it's just a plain white box, and the purpose is it will block out all of the other content on the slide so that you're just looking at the question you want to see. I just duplicated that box and put it on top. So now all I see is the question I want to go over. So let's preview this again. Okay, here's the handout, and then you zoom in, and now all you're looking at is the question you want to look at. Now, let's say you are uh, teaching your students how to use a process of elimination. Um, what I might want to do is add, uh, actually I'm not going to use a text box, I'm going to use a line and maybe cross out the wrong answers. Okay, so I'm just going to take a line here and I'm going to make it a flat line. And let's say choice number one, let's see, California is on a mid-ocean ridge, that's wrong. So I'm going to cross out choice number one. And so let's, let's 
really instead of just using a black boring line like this let's really make this look nice almost like we crossed it out with a red marker so I'm gonna go ahead and change the color to a nice bright red but again it still doesn't quite look that realistic so what I can do is I can change the stroke maybe to something uh, a little more marker like maybe something like that okay and uh, you know if you really want to get fancy you can actually um, tilt it a little bit uh, let's say kind of tilt it a little bit and then actually make kind of an X shape I'm going to duplicate that command D and then I'm going to tilt it the other way and by the way to tilt these I'm just holding down the command button and dragging on one of the edges and it lets you tilt it as much as you want okay and so there you actually have a nice X that actually crosses out the first one um, it's nice to make this build in so what I might do is go over here and build in this line as a wipe make it go a little bit quicker than that and then the second line I will also build in as a wipe and I'm going to make that second one happen right automatically after build number one. Okay, and so let's see what our slideshow looks like so far. Okay, so we're focused on our question and now I can cross out that first one. And then once you've done this once, it becomes very easy. What I can do is I'm just going to select one of the lines and then I'm going to command select another one. So now I've both selected and now I can duplicate that by doing command D. And you see it's made a perfect copy. So now uh, choice four is wrong as well. I can put these down here. And what's cool is it also copies the builds so that it becomes very quick and easy to create a, a worksheet. Excuse me. Uh, let me just undo what I just did. Uh, I'm just going to duplicate that. And I'm going to take this and cross out this because choice two is wrong as well. And so let's see what we got here. Okay, so cross out the first one, cross out the fourth one, and the second one. And uh, just for fun, if I wanted to, I could actually go ahead and take a circle with no fill and give it a nice pen style stroke. Now, since this is the correct answer, maybe I'll make it have a um, green stroke. And I'm just going to stretch it out, turn it into a nice oval, and we will circle the correct answer. Kind of like that. And uh, let's have that build in again with a wipe. And let's see what we got so far. Okay, so there's your worksheet. You zoom in on the question you want to go over, cross out the wrong answers, and circle the correct answers. So it's great. It gives your presentation a little more interest. Uh, it's a little more fun than just using an overhead projector. And of course, you can do all sorts of different things. Um, let me give you some other examples. I'm going to go to this page here. Now again, I'm going to do the same thing. This is the second page of the PDF document. I'm going to give it that stroke again, make it fit properly on the screen. OK, tell your students, OK, now we're going to go to this page. And now let's actually zoom in on a diagram. So I'm going to stretch my PDF as much as I can and it's nice because with PDF documents you do not get um, all pixelized as you zoom in so you notice that even though I'm zooming really really far in onto this slide um, my pictures are nice and crisp and clear okay now I'm gonna go back I want to hide this text here and down here I just want to show the picture so I'm actually gonna go back to my previous slide and I'm gonna steal those two white boxes and I'm going to command C to copy them and then go to my new slide and command V to paste them. Uh, you really got to get in the habit of using the command C and command V and actually you know it cuts down on your work time tremendously. I just got to move them over. All right and there we go and I'm going to come back here and do a magic move just like I did in the first slide and let's see what this looks like. So now I have my second page of my handout, my magic move, and there's my beautiful diagram and now I could do all sorts of neat stuff here um, like let's say I wanted to show that this piece of oceanic crust is sinking under this continental crust what I could do is add um, let's say a nice curving arrow like this where I can go using my arrow shape whoops sorry that one didn't work out so well uh, let's do this so start here maybe end over here and make it curve nicely 
Okay, maybe give it an arrow for the end. Make it a nice bright color. Okay, and maybe give it a little bit of a shadow just to make it stand out from the background. And in terms of having it build in, I want to show the movement of this plate so I can have it wipe from left to right on click. So again, it's a great way to show um, you know details of a picture without having to sit there and mark something up and do it over every class over and over again. You can create a really detailed presentation and go through an entire worksheet. Let me show you one more quick tip. I'm going to add a new slide and I want to go back and get uh, that third page of my PDF document. So I'm opening up preview again. I want to get this page now. Okay. Now this is a, a real nice trick. So I'm going to do the same thing I did before. Um, we'll give it a nice stroke, make it fit, okay. And now let's say I want to focus on, um, I don't know, uh, this picture right here. So I'm going to zoom way in, okay, get it centered, okay, make it a little bit bigger. Okay, now again, I'm going to steal my white boxes from the previous slide. Let me go back here and take it from here. One, two, copy, paste, put one down here, and one way up here. And there's my beautiful picture. It's very focused. Now, here's something really, really neat you can do. Um, let's say I want to point out the fact that this right here is, is a piece of the earth called the Pacific Plate. But I really want to focus on that. Maybe I want to dim out the rest of the slide. What I can actually do is put in some other boxes. Okay. And now I don't want to totally block out the rest of the slide, but I kind of want to dim it so that we focus just on that term Pacific Plate. So what I'm doing is I'm creating this box here and I'm going to make it black and give it an opacity of maybe 70%. That looks good with no stroke. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically fill around. Now there's lots of ways to do this. This is just, I think, the quickest. I'm going to fill around. Whoops. Uh, copy and paste. So I'm just copying and pasting the box and lining them all up real quick because they snap into place. You see it? So it's nice and easy. Okay. And I got to do one more. Should be right here, but this one's got to be a lot smaller because I'm just covering that little tiny area. So I'm going to put that in right there. I don't want them overlapping because then you get kind of a weird look. Now, what I did was I just grayed everything out. So now watch this. This is neat. I'm going to take this box, one up here, one over here, and one here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to group all of them. And then what I can do is on the slide, I can have that group kind of dissolve in real slow and then when I'm ready I could have it dissolve out and let's see what the final effect is so again here's my third page beautiful zoom in whoops forgot to add my magic move let me just go back and add my magic move magic move there we go okay zoom in my picture. Now I want my students to focus on the term Pacific Plate. So watch this. I can have everything build in and see your attention is drawn to what you want it drawn to. And then I could zoom back out and we can continue working. Uh, so these are just some nice little quick tricks that work in Keynote. Um, and they, they're really, really helpful for going over assignments, quizzes, labs, etc. They can have a really powerful effect. They can be reused year after year. They can uh, be reused throughout the day so that you're not constantly cleaning off a whiteboard or, or using your smart board over and over again, etc. It's a, it's a nice trick. Thanks for listening.